All tied up at 52. You see the time running down. So who do you go to? The freshman, Jared Sullinger, posts up, backs in, turns. The shot is short. The follow-up no good. Time runs out. And so they are headed to overtime where Ohio State has a one-point lead right now. Meanwhile, Xavier, down by 15, made a huge run to come back against Dayton. But they trail by two with 40 seconds left. Dan. John, thank you. Close game down the stretch here. Reggie Johnson who misses the free throw. A three-point deficit for Carolina. They have never led in this game. Trailed by as many as 17 earlier this half. Turn around, seven. Again, he took his time, exercised patience on the block. Earlier in the game, he was throwing up quick ones off balance. Nothing like real competition in a close game situation to get back to focus again. And a timeout called by Miami. You take a look at Tyler Zeller on the block, very much under control as opposed to some of the earlier shots. And watch him turn and locate the defense. The little peak right there, recognizing that he's got a size advantage, a length advantage over Reggie Johnson, and that was right in his wheelhouse. Now, earlier today, the Hurricanes were executing a lot more smoothly offensively than they have recently as we check out our recent perfect play. And the perfect play was perfectly executed. Screen and roll, just the way it was drawn up. Again, using the high screen to roll to the basket, catches the weak side Carolina defense asleep. Reggie Johnson has spent part of the afternoon in foul trouble, but has been very effective when he's been in there. And he's surrounded by a bunch of three-point shooters for Miami. They've got nine threes on the day, but ironically, Carolina has made more threes than Miami has today. That's not something you would expect. They didn't hit many in the first half, but Leslie McDonald, Kendall Marshall, Harrison Barnes have all knocked him down in the second half. Yeah, by comparison, they haven't hit many all year. As they finish at the bottom, the three point field of the center of the goal is made. The drive by Duran Scott. Rebound Johnson. Good patience. Got it again. And he's fouled. Not penalty situation yet. But here's the deal for Carolina. You know you have an outstanding shot blocker who's going to go after everything. Somebody has got to cover his man. Somebody also has to go to the glass. Because when John Henson goes to block shots, he's out of position for rebound. 16 foul on Carolina is the next one. No matter what, we'll put Miami on the line. Drive by Thomas to kick, and now back into the hands of Malcolm Grant. Two and a half to go. Miami up by one on the number one seed, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah, he's he a perfect play. He's doing it. going to go back to it. That's because he couldn't use his left hand. Barnes. And a long rebound back out to the Tar Heels, who again have never led in this game. Barnes again. Thomas the rebound for Miami. We go under two minutes to go in regulation. Screen and roll has been very effective. Look for Miami to continue to go to it. Carolina wants to double team and just get him out of that comfort. Scott, he didn't want to shoot that ball. He was looking to pass it and then took the shot and he missed a wide open three. Timeout Carolina with a minute 34 to go in the first of four quarterfinals. You'll see here from the ACC tournament at Greensboro today on ESPN2. Hurricanes now clinging to a one-point lead. They were down 10 with 42 seconds to go against Virginia yesterday. Forced overtime, won the game, and now Carolina Lend is trying to turn the tables on the Hurricanes. Yeah, as I said, what goes around can oftentimes come back around. Miami trying to avoid the Carolina freight train that's picking up steam right now. And they've been doing it from beyond the arc. Uncharacteristic of the Carolina team that's much better in the mid-range and inside than they've been outside. And they just 
are playing with such confidence. They haven't hesitated. And as we saw in the last possession, you know, Miami's starting to hesitate yeah. on shots that they pull the trigger on with no conscience earlier in the game. Surprising. Durant Scott's a very good shooter, had a wide open look, but clearly looked like he didn't want to shoot the ball. So now Carolina's got it, looking for their first lead of the afternoon. Boston College and Virginia Tech, or excuse me, Boston College and Clemson, our next quarterfinal. It will start about 20 minutes after the conclusion of this game. In the zone again. Marshall gets inside. Rebound to Zeller. Nice shot fake. McDonald. In and out, loose ball. Miami ball. Carolina with a couple of cracks at it. Couldn't convert. And Grant fouled by Barnes. Malcolm Grant, the best free throw shooter in the ACC, is going to the foul line. Grant's a little bit upset. Some words being exchanged, it looks like. And the official's trying to make sure the lid doesn't blow off this one with just a minute to go. Well, first of all, again, fouling Malcolm Grant 60 feet from the basket. Huge mistake. But Grant's about to negate that mistake by flapping the lips. What you should be doing is knocking him down from the free throw line. Let the free throw through the talking. Teammates, teammates are intervening for sure. But man, you gotta be focused on the game. You forget all this talk. You can see right on the verge of technicals. I don't believe technicals were called. It looked like Rain Tilly was right on the verge of giving one or two players technical fouls. And now Roger Ayers is doing the same thing. He's calling over Leslie McDonald and Malcolm Grant, the two players who were involved in that verbal altercation, and telling them to cool it. Yeah, Malcolm Grant, of all people, again, he's got an opportunity to shut everybody up on Carolina, at least momentarily, by knocking down these free throws. But I do applaud the officials with their restraint. kind of would have messed this whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> good for the official. Frank Hayne pulls his rebounders out of the lane. This would make it a three-point game. Still a lot of time left. He missed it. See? Last minute of the game, do you talk it? Last minute of regulation. Again, Carolina has never led. Zeller. Assist number nine for Kendall Marshall. And as I said, you don't find it if you're open. No ball pressure. Johnson with four fouls allowing Zeller to get point blank range position. It's just a bad combination for Miami. Look at the top right there. Reggie Johnson could do nothing but put his hands up. Although he should be focused on taking that spot away from Tyler Zeller. ESPN, the home court of Championship Week, continues tonight with both Big East semifinal games. First at 7 Eastern, Connecticut and Syracuse. Remember the six-overtime game a couple of years ago? That's followed up by Louisville and Notre Dame. Notre Dame just pounding Cincinnati in the quarterfinals last night. The Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters as part of the home court of Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods on ESPN tonight. Notre Dame certainly in play for a number one seed. North Carolina potentially in play for a number one seed, but obviously they have to win this game today to keep that dream alive. It's Miami ball, 39 seconds to go. The Hurricanes trying to pull off a big upset. Thomas, Scott, Grant, Adams, Johnson in the game for Miami. I mean, it's no secret Carolina's got to play solid defense without fouling and no offensive rebounds for Miami. And then Carolina gets the ball. No seller on defense. I'm sorry, Lamb, for Carolina. Roy Williams has gone smaller. Scott again. Adams. Grant. out obviously for fear of getting fouled and having a few free throws even though he's been pretty good from the line but on that last play Thomas 
so surprised, and you kind of would be, although you should be ready. You have the best three-point shooter in the conference with the ball at the top of the key. You're not expecting him to pass it to you. Well, these two teams, Len, were in this exact situation during the regular season down at Coral Gables. Tied at 71 in the closing seconds. Harrison Barnes, early into the game, hit a three, and then when they were down two, Barnes with his baseline jumper, that tied the game just over a minute to go, and then Barnes, the game winner, a three-pointer with 6.6 seconds to go as North Carolina beat Miami, 74 to 71. And Harrison Barnes, who's the leading scorer today for North Carolina, has hit so many game-tying or game-winning shots late in games in the last few weeks. You've got to believe Roy Williams, including the one at Florida State just last week, you got to believe Roy Williams is probably going to draw something up for the freshman. Well, he certainly will get a touch. And um, I think Roy Williams rethought taking John Henson out of the game. Henson rechecks to get back in. North Carolina has not led for a single second of this game. They were down 17 midway through the second half. For Carolina, they come out of the huddle with Marshall, McDonald, Henson, Barnes, Zeller. And boy, how quickly Miami's fortunes have turned. Yesterday, coming back in an amazing comeback, and today, blowing a 19-point lead. Darius Adams defending Barnes. Miami, after being in a zone, literally the entire game, it seems, in a man-to-man -man right now. Marshall's going to run it down. they got a foul to give. they got a couple of fouls to give. That'll be the fifth team foul on Miami, so we're down to 8.4. They've still got one more to give. They're going to do it again. A few more seconds to come off the clock. And there's Gamble with the foul, and now we're down to 5.6. Sound strategy by the Hurricanes. And I'm sure Roy Williams had expected it, and he was motioning exactly where he thought the ball should be inbound, and they've got a play all set up for that. Barnes to Marshall. Four seconds. Marshall driving. Up to center.